Welcome to Inspire, Innovate, Ignite, Conversations That Count. And this is being presented by sacredyou.love. Our topic tonight is how do 21st century women use spirituality in life and love? With us, we have four incredible experts. And if you give me one moment, I'm going to find their descriptions. Um, we're going to start with Naomi Martelli. Naomi is compelled by a deep desire for women to have an unshakable relationship with themselves in which they can hold all the parts of their being with love. She supports and guides in the recon reconnection and reclamation of their wholeness through heart-centered coaching. The way she facilitates spaces activates remembrance of the powerful light within. Her vision for herself and others is to joyfully live our lives with deep meaning, compassion, and gratitude. Thank you for joining us, Naomi. I am so thrilled that you're here. I'm sure that you're going to have so much to share with us. Well, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, can't wait to get started. Next, we have Zinzi Bianca Sullivan. Zinzi is a mindfulness coach who helps introverted women find balance and calm and reconnect with their feminine spirit and purpose with ease. Zinzi believes that we can have it all, purpose, balance, and abundance, and that being introverted, and that being introverted is a powerful gift to be understood and celebrated. Zinzi works with clients one-on-one, -on -one, runs sacred circles, and offers Vedic astro astro astrology and readings. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, I am looking forward. <laughs> oh, it's going to be amazing. Next, we have Lisa DePampless. Lisa helps women reclaim their voice, become confidently visible, and embody their infinite life as they rise up out of the chaos and hustle. They break free from the weight of overwhelm and self doubt so they can reach success in the lightness of joy and ease. They learn their access, they learn to access their superhuman abilities and experience a whole new way of up leveling their reality so they can welcome all forms of abundance and be all they came here to be. Lisa is the host of Rise Up, Embody Your Infinite Light Tribe and the co-host of Finding Me, Coming Home to Your Own Divinity Tribe um, in our sacred community, the sacred community of Sacred University, the Sacred You. And finally, you. oh, you're so welcome. I'm so excited about this. Finally, we have Alison Cotton. Alison is a six slash two generator with a sacral response authority. Allison is here to master her own skills in life by design, transform and transmute that energy so she can share what she has learned by using her Mars Gate 31. This is Allison's passion for she loves leading by example and she's a boots on the ground type gal. And I believe that I've been talking to her and she's totally boots on the ground. Allison is an energetics for business coach and host of Aligned by Design, Human Design tribe for, again, this sacred community. Um, and I'm Sue Rumat. I'm a life coach. Um, I'm an empath trainer. And I'm a very, um, I have been a channeler since childhood. So our topic tonight of spirituality and women um, in the 20th, 20th century, how we use spirituality is a is a topic that's very, very close to my heart. I believe that we embrace our spirituality, um, but we, what we don't realize is that our spirituality changes slightly in every facet of our lives. So our spirituality changes slightly in how we bring spirituality into how we love, how we do business, how we connect with our siblings and our parents, our friends, and how we connect with the universe. So our special guests tonight are going to be sharing their visions of all of this. So we are Inspire, Innovate, Ignite, Conversations That Count. So give me just one moment and I am going to um, just get back to where I hid all my notes so I can ask all the right questions. So bear with me just one moment. And while I do that, 
How about if everybody puts into the chat where you're from um, and what you would like to take away from tonight? The one little nugget that you would like to take away from tonight. Okay, now I just need to open up a couple of little things um, so that we can get started. Okay, so ladies, we have Naomi and Lisa and Zinzi and Allison. Would it would it would be amazing if each of you could share your personal understanding of spirituality. And it'll be interesting, interesting to see how they overlap and how they differ. So who would like to start? Your def your personal definition. Oh, Lisa, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, I'll start. Uh, we're all light. We are we are light. We are oneness um, of the ex an expression, a facet of the expression of all that is. And that's basically my my definition definition of spirituality is is we are the light and and through our beingness we get to live a spiritual life we get to live life however we are being and the more conscious we are the more light we let in the less struggle we have the easier life gets and and the the higher the, the more that we we attract into our lives that which we want the we just have, you know it's just it becomes a very magical life the more light you have in the more you are coming home to yourself the more you are being that light and showing up as that beautiful absolutely beautiful thank you who would like to add to that their own version who, naomi Go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. I, I just love that. Um, Lisa, you know, the, the light and being the light and that we're all connected through this light. And um, for me also, it's that connection to divine love. And, I'm, and I mean, I know we're going to be talking about life and love, but um, uh, divine love, like that state of divine love, which is the all that is. Um, for me, it's that journey yes journey um back home to us also that remembrance of who we truly are what we truly are that we're not we're not what we see and we're, we're the things that we identify with but we are it's about discovering who and what that that light that consciousness that energy is that i am that is eternal, that is never changing, that is experiencing everything and really building um, a, a, a beautiful relationship with that pure aspect of ourselves. And, and of course, like Lisa said, it, it flows over into all of, all of our life. It's about removing the resistances when we realise just how magnificent we truly are not from an ego you know place not from that because of the things I do and and all that kind of thing but like it's just about getting to that truth with a capital T for me um, and just living daily life simply through that lens through that energy with that intention um, and allowing life to open up to us and for us to open up into life and of course that connection that it's that universal connection that's what it actually is we are all, that we are all that so anything I do that um, you know it is beneficial and expansive for me is also gifting that to all of us because of that connection and I think it's just the most beautiful path to unity which I, I feel we all long for that's what we really desire to live in in that kind of space of unity which is accepting everything beautiful so we have light and we have love and we have love coming from our essential self from the very beginning of time 
shared right through us. Beautiful, we are building a beautiful picture here. Who would like to go next? Can I say that? Yes, please. Okay, so um, very much of a similar opinion to Lisa and Naomi. And the only piece that I would add to that is that that would be like my feeling and my definition. Um, but I think it's really important for each person to establish their their own connection and their own tuning into their own wisdom as to what they define as spirituality for themselves. So it might be that like I'm of the opinion that I'm divine and and of taking away the layers of the ego so that we can come back to our, our true selves that we tend to forget as as life can get in the way and it might not be the focus of the external world so much on on the spiritual side of life um, for another it might be um, being in deep devotion or in deep service to others or something greater than themselves they might view themselves as as uh, looking upon that which is that greater element um, so that it might be different for different people and I think it's really beautiful when we can um yeah each find our own unique way of connecting to that that divinity that greater element god whatever it might be in in your your own unique way and respecting that it can come in different shapes and forms and connections for different people and it's all perfect thank you so much for giving our our listeners permission to accept their own forms of spirituality, whether or not they conform to any other person's expert or not. Cindy, thank you. That was a, a beautiful share. Allison, boots on the ground gal. You're the last one. Yes. What do you have, what do you have to tell us? I, I, besides having three heart opening experiences and then feeling that energy deep, deep inside of me, just going, yes, 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 to everything that was being said, I really don't have much more to add. It's, it is truly about that connection to the oneness of us. You know, as a little girl, I remember we, I used to lay on the, lay on the ground. And when we went camping, I used to look at the stars and think, I came from there, like we're seven years old. I came from there. Which one was I? And you just have this awe and wonder. And I think if we just connect back to that at the very, very core of us, we will find whatever that oneness is for us. That's really all I can say about it. Again, giving permission for our, our listeners, our watchers to to find that oneness in themselves, to give themselves permission. Mm. Really, thank you. I think I think the four of you have painted a very complete picture and given people permission to accept whichever part of it works for them. Thank you. My next question is going to kind of skip away from that piece of wholeness um, and kind of address where we are in the world right now. This is the 21st century. It's very different from any other century um, in recent time, any, any other time in recent times. And so uh, the question I have for you is, do you, do you think women's spirituality has been changed by the challenges of this century? Do you think that women's spirituality has been changed in some way? Lisa, go ahead and please start. You got your hand up. Yeah. Well, I had my hand up earlier. Just I, I wanted to say for for the for the listeners, um, I always say joy is like the navigation, the path to to your connection to all that is. And so that's an easy way to if you're really in joy, then you are exuding spirituality so um but to answer your question i think it's changed in that um women now have can be seen doing their magic we we are learning how to um, show up and be the powerful women that we are the creators that we are 
And so it's totally different this century than it really ever has been. And um, owning that, you know, the other thing is we get to, we don't have to listen to what people say is fact. We get to know the truth of who we are and, and really lean into that and trust that. And I think that's, again, different than any other time in history. Um, yeah, just very empowered this, this age. Well, I don't, I agree with you 100%. Um, I think that if I, if I can add something here, I think back in Greek times, women were considered to be goddesses. We were priestesses. We had a place, a valued place in society. A lot's changed since then. And over the centuries, we became our spirituality, our women's wisdom um, became a, a form of witchcraft and something not to be, something to be distrusted with dis-ease. Um, and, and only women would come seeking us um, for the needs that couldn't be met anywhere else. So yes, I'm in complete and total agreement with you on what you just shared. Thank you very much. Who would like to go next and add to this story? To, to add. Oh, go, go Zinzi, you're on. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was going to add to what you were sharing as well, Sue, that I think we also still have a ways to go um, in terms of... Uh, like in, in those times, is, is that like a way of, of creating that fear makes it easy to control then? And we're still seeing a lot of this kind of similar things, whether it's specifically about spirituality, but the idea of creating more fear in the world to therefore then be able to create more control and control people through, through fear. So I think there's something really special in like the, the opportunities that arise in that time as well to look at when when things are starting when there's big upheaval big change to start to tune in and I think over the past especially the past couple of years I've noticed a lot of people and a lot of women that were spending a lot of energy going out socializing connecting not not necessarily that tuning in as much to themselves and this this time especially in Australia well and I was in in the southern part of Australia where a lot of time in lockdown that then it's a real like when you got nothing else to do you're like in with yourself that it's a real time to then look within and to draw from that and to use that time in in powerful ways so that main things I wanted to add that yeah, there is lots of lots of opportunity in what's coming and still still plenty more to be done but I think one of the biggest opportunities that we have is that when when there is fear created also there's a binding together of people and I've seen this beautiful coming together of really special people I've often been painted in very terrible ways that completely misrepresent what's actually going on if you're on the ground but when you're on the ground there's like beautiful people coming together with curious minds questioning minds women coming together and binding together so I think that's that's something really special where especially in Australia we've often been quite separate and we we're fine on our own we like we've got the house and separate but then uh, when when things change and when crisis comes it brings people together and then something really powerful and magical can happen so I think kind of in in the process of that I think you're right I think that um the past two and a half three years that we have been living a very different life than we ever expected, really has opened up a lot of people to a lot of introspection, you know, thinking about their lives, thinking about their place in the world. Mm -hmm. And perhaps the people who never expected to become spiritual have found something um, in something, some area of their life that they never expected to. Thank you, a beautiful, beautiful opening. Before I ask for our next, uh, our next panelist, 
I'd like to acknowledge um, Tracy is watching from Australia and Jane, who is open to what she will learn on this on this um, panel. So welcome to both of you. And if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat. I am looking for them. If I miss them, Sophia is going to make sure that I see them. Thank you, Sophia. Who would like to go next? I can. Okay, yeah. Um, so it's again just adding on and building it feels like the energy is just building for for whatever is coming i'm sure there is something because as you were talking zinzi i was writing down um shifting out of fear perception and it's basically a deconditioning process that we are going through we're sort of completing a cycle by human design in 2027 we are shifting out of an old cycle an old 400 year cycle and into a new one and it's not just going to be we're all going to just dive off the cliff and it's done and things have changed immediately it's nothing like that we're not doing an independence day thing here but it is more of a deconditioning process it is called a process for a reason right we generally come to cycle endings and whilst we feel things are slowing down they sort of speed up at the same time in different ways it's they're just sort of showing me going down into a valley and then coming back up a mountain um the energy doesn't stop flowing it just sort of tapers off and flow and slows down a little as the cycle ends so um anyway so <laughs> i digress shifting out of fear perception through a deconditioning process is what i wrote so we can connect to oneness and move into the the next phase of acceptance in in the energetic sense. Beautiful. You know, we are we are coming across so many things that we didn't think that we could handle or do or or believe in, and suddenly there's this acceptance of. And it reminded me when you said about Australia has been through so much. We were here where I live. We lived. Um, the fire came within five kilometres of our home on New Year's Eve. Sorry. Um, that was, I didn't think that I had the power within me to to do what I had to do in that period of time. But you just find the courage, you find the strength, and you come to this acceptance, it's just got to be fucking done. Excuse my French. It's just got to be done, right? And so you just keep moving and keep going. And I think if we can connect to that power, that power source within us, it can lead us out of that fear perception and deconditioning into that oneness of acceptance. That was hard. To hear. That was hard. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that vulnerability because it just proves to the rest of us that it doesn't really matter what happens. We will, if we believe we can do it. Yeah. We believe the connection and the oneness. And the, and we have that inside of us. That we just keep putting one step in front of the other. And we just you know? keep going. Yeah. And, and I mean, living through this 21st century, this is the stuff that we have to cope and deal with. You your, fire, your fire is... is I told you, I was boots on the ground. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. But your fire is also... Um, emblematic it's 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 actually just it's a visual for what what we're all facing whether mm. it's the pandemic or whether it's personal health challenges or mm. your finances your finances have gone to shit pardon my french um or whatever it is that you're facing that is your fire yeah and and if you can bring that spirituality that belief that there is something beyond you that that is going to be there to support you so that you yourself can put yourself forward and keep moving. That's, that's a message that if we take nothing away from today, this session, then that is all we need to take away. Plus the oneness, plus the permission, plus the love, plus the light, plus the light, plus that each one of us has our own form of spirituality that is just as valid as anybody else's. Thank you so much, Allison. I, I truly appreciate your sharing. Naomi. Wow. Talk. Ladies, Talk. I don't know what I can 
possibly add to that because you've just encapsulated like the whole spectrum of all the things, all the things like you've spoken to Alison that we're facing, you know, constantly. It's it's like you know, I was contemplating this morning. Um, we hear this thing, oh, unprecedented times all the time, all the time. This is it's just like it's a phrase we hear every day at the moment. It's like Really? Because it seems like everything's an unprecedented, unprecedented time at the moment, doesn't it? And so I was kind of contemplating, you know, back through time and centuries and like, well, how was life different? And we can look at things through rose colored glasses and like looking back, we can either look at, oh, look how restrictive that time must have been. And yet, also, we can look back and go, oh, but there was, they didn't have the same kind of pressures and the same kind of problems we've got now. Um, you know, so life was, you know, the, the roaring 40s and, you know, the 20s, we even amidst amongst everything that was going on in the world right then, you know, there was still this, um, we look back and we go, oh, yes, but there was, there was a freedom that we don't have now. It seems to me that it doesn't matter what period of time, perhaps, we have lived in or been living in that we I, I think it's it's always these same things that we've been talking to that that are prevalent and I, I just think perhaps in the 21st century it's really quite amplified at the moment and Alison you spoke to that you know it's like this quickening I was thinking of um, last night it's like there's this quickening of so many things happening so fast we just seem to be faced with one thing after another after another and it's like Oh, okay, now I can breathe. Okay, equilibrium, life settling back again. Whew. And then off we go again on an, on, a, on another ride, on another roller coaster, on another hurdy gurdy, whatever it is. Um, it just feels, for me, it, it 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 seems like we are in a time where, yeah, it it's it is being amplified because perhaps there are these energetic um, cycles, you know, that are happening. And I guess it's just what's different for us is perhaps I think um I, I loved the deconditioning it's it's like it's we're un, we're in a time we're in this container that's like squeezing us like ever so lovingly but it is like sometimes it's, it's squeezing us and squeezing us and squeezing us so that we get closer and closer to our being and it's the unlearning I think this 20th century is it's it's offering us the unlearning of all of that stuff from the past everything we've talked about it ladies in the divine feminine you know the the conditioning and 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 all this all the things that that are part of us because they've already existed and I think there's this amplification that's kind of squeezing us to actually unlearn everything that we've been told we're supposed to be and how we're meant to be and and the woman's place and what spirituality is and how you get to practice it now in the 21st century we've spoken we get to practice spirituality however we goddamn want to all right like we and we and we get to I think what's beautiful is um you know the 60s opened us up to um different things other than to perhaps if you were brought up in Catholic, Baptist, whatever it was, you know, you were opened up to Eastern um, philosophies, perhaps. Um, I feel as things are speeding up, obviously, we've got more access to more things, it's easier for us to be able to experience and taste and um, integrate into our lives in the way that we want to integrate it into our lives to deal with our daily life and our spirituality is our daily life it's the simple things as well as the big things um and I think we actually have that agency we have more agency around that right now to allow it to be to be all of those things and another thing that was coming through for me and I think you know Lisa Zinzi and Alison have all tapped into that too is um it's this coming back to community, you know, circles are on the increase, aren't they? It, it seemed to be, you know, I know I've, I've been through periods of time and thinking as a woman, like, I haven't had any of that, you know, I've been on my own, um, you know, as an only child, you know, I was sort of isolated with my parents a little bit and everything like that. So there was, there's 
I longed for those kind of um, those circles, that holding of each other. And I think that these times, even though we've gone through the isolation, it's actually brought us more into community. And I think that's a very different community to the way we've had maybe separate communities. You know, it's 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 everything joining together is is how I seem to see things opening up for us. And perhaps that's the way it's going to expand even more. Yeah. Thank you. I think we needed to hear that. And that kind of encapsulates everything that our other three experts were talking about. It kind of brings it all together and makes it a complete package. And the fact that we are looking for circles, we are looking for community. Um, and we need community, um, especially in these times. And that brings me to my next question so perfectly. Um, do you believe women today need spiritual protection? Go ahead, Alison. <laughs> Is this really a question? <laughs> well, um, you know, I, 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 the answer. <laughs> I look at it from the perspective of we energetically we should be going to the spiritual gym. We should be protecting our own energy. We should be caring and maintaining our, our physical humanness, right? Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, the entire kit and caboodle. So when it comes to protection in that aspect, I don't believe so. We should be able to do this ourselves. We are intuit beings and we can get that. We know what to do and we physically, should, it just happens. I'm a true believer of that. It just happens. If you intend it, it occurs. Yes. Right? Yes. So, um, so I suppose it's, it's, you know, which protection aspect are we looking at? Is it from others? Is it from the outside world? Well, it's about them. It's not about us. Okay. Would somebody like to add to what Alison has just said, expand that a little further. Go ahead, Lisa. Yeah, I will. Um, and I agree, Alison, we, we are empowered. We have, we have the power within us. We are spiritual, we are light, we are all that is. And there's also the humanness of us that is maybe overly sensitive, um, that gets um, that hasn't healed all of our shadow that gets triggered by other things, and so you may need to have a little, you know, assistance from from the higher dimensions to which is all us too. I mean, all of this is us, even if you're praying to you know angels or um, beings of light and love. It, it's it is still all aspects of us. So we are the ones that are empowered to protect ourselves. It's it's doing it's being diligent in in doing that um in purifying our aura in 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 making sure that we are setting boundaries in all of the things that should be you know should be that are part of my daily practice and are very beneficial to me um and i think beneficial to most people who have a daily practice i 100 percent agree and that's what the spiritual gym is you know, and, and it's it's no it's no worse than going to a gym where you, you're amplifying your muscles, right? You, it's the same type of gym, except you're working your mo emotions, right? We are physical human beings having an emotional experience. So our emotions need to be checked in. Our mental health needs to be checked in. Is it congruent with what's going on? Is it true? Is it not true? Et cetera, et cetera. So yes, 100% agree. Would like to I can I can add to that and I agree with what's being shared and I think it's 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 absolutely if we have a, a practice whether that's meditation yoga you're defining your own kind of spiritual space having a, a refuge time to can like create a connection being aware of what's going on in the mind all of those things will uh, whether it's chanting mantra or saying prayers whatever it is that as a like a general 
whether I don't know baseline of too much 21st century now have that kind of level general level of that being integrated in our lives I think that gives us natural kind of protective energy in general where we're purifying the things that not in a sort of typical sense but sort of cleansing those those things that aren't serving us and releasing us releasing from ourselves and we can uh, sort of protect our energy and maintain a, a greater sense of balance and equilibrium I think that that said some it's it's also about having an awareness of what's affecting us and if we're going into a particular space how does that feel energetically does the energy drop when you walk into the room does your stomach sink when some particular person approaches you uh, like do you have a, a bad sense when you're walking along the road like those those sorts of things like having a tuning in to what's going on inside and then supporting that energetically whether it is like physically removing yourself whether it's cleansing a space after a, like a what you felt has been a bad energy is there or whether it's it's wearing crystals or uh, malas or whatever it is that you resonate with that can help to support your energy I, I think it's a balance between the two because there's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of various energy going on in the world and and kind of I feel it's really important to be tuning in and especially I've noticed the more that um, I've developed my spiritual practice that it's more integrated we also become more sensitive more tuned in to frequencies that perhaps other people don't even pick up on they don't realize if you why are you just feeling crappy all of a sudden like that, those sorts of things so finding a balance between protecting awareness and having a, a general practice that supports us I think is important thank you that's I love the way that you summarized all the different um, ways that people could potentially protect themselves and these are the ways that, and not everybody follows all of them, and you don't have to follow all of them. All you have to do is choose the one that suits you in that moment or in that time frame. And as you, as you build your protection practice, you begin to open up to more and different and different levels of that protection. Um, everybody's answers have just built us, built the story as we go along. We are a wonderful group. Um, before we continue, I know Naomi. I'm waiting for yours. I'd like to um, uh, thank Anna. Anna has said, inspiring conversation. Thank you. And Corinna um, loves the French. So she's just fine with our French. So thank you, ladies, for, for speaking up. If you do have questions about anything that has been said here, please ask your personal questions, too, because we have time to answer them. Um, Naomi, your turn, please. Okay. Um, again, ladies, like you've you've just pulled it all together like so beautifully. And it, it's just, it's that awareness, you know. Energy follows thought, right? Is what's coming up for me right now. And I'm gonna just sprinkle something a little different to what we've because I am yes to all of those things, and that is it. So here's where I'm moving now. Um, energy follows thoughts. So if I'm thinking about I need protection, then follows that I'm probably going to create the need for protection. So I guess this is really for me, it's, you know, the Course in Miracles kind of teachings and which is all, all of the teachings, isn't it? Fear, love. <laughs> Am I, so the awareness is, am I, am I operating from now a space of fear or am I operating from a space of love? Um, that's my protection. And yes, I've done lots of all of those other things too. And you know what? In any given moment, you know, my higher um, guidance, my, my higher self is going to let me know um, if I do need something very specific because Yes, it's not all love and unicorns and rainbows and butterflies, right? 
It just isn't. I know we want it to be that way, but it's just not, okay? Um, and it can be. I think it's about bringing that into our life and integrating it, you know, mixing it all in as part of the ingredient ingredients of our lives. Um, you know, there's stuff out there. There's, there is French out there, right? <laughs> Shit out there. There are perhaps other energies out there. I feel I've had experiences with those energies at times. Now, is that just my Maya, my illusion, or is it actually the truth? I, I cannot say definitively because I'm in this human experience right now. So that's just my little spin on it, that yes to absolutely all of this, um, but my question now for me is, well, hang on a second. Is it just, am I just being fearful? What am I fearing? So let's, let's, let's like sit with this. Let's shed some light. Let's illuminate it. Let's bring it back into radiance. And so it's that in that sort of internal protection. Um, I think if we believe we need it, then we're going to need it. And we're setting ourselves up for a whole lot of struggle. Um, and also it's not being naive. You know, it, it's, it is being aware, being real. Choose whatever it is that you, you feel needs, you need right, right in that moment and what serves you. Um, and my question is, 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 is this leading me back to joy? So whatever process I might use, it's, it's, it's just a process to help me transition through whatever the energy that I'm feeling, which is mine anyway, okay, and transition, you know, to that, space that unabiding joy is is where I'm wanting to direct myself to so yeah just a slightly extra little thought on that one as well brilliant and again you are giving for people permission to open themselves up to being wherever they are in this process and and doing it with joy I, I think we need to hear that I think we need to give ourselves permission about 25 years ago, my life took a huge change, huge turnaround, everything, everything blew up and everything had to come back together again. And um, I started signing my emails at work, which was a corporation, enjoy, enjoy. And it was a professional signature that I put on my emails to my clients, my corporate clients. And it was enjoy, enjoy. And um, it's surprising how that just changed the, uh, the flavor of all of those conversations. It kind of gave people permission to be a little bit more human in that setting. Um, so thank you. Enjoy, enjoy is, is a very important um, aspect of moving into this new world if we haven't done that in the past. And just that alone, the joy aspect could become um, a brand new spiritual person's spirituality, just living in the joy, just to get used to it. Um, we are, we have about 15 minutes left. If our listeners have any questions, uh, now is the time to ask. And if you want to put your questions into the chat, that would be amazing. Uh, all of our all of our experts are going to be putting their information. Their information will be loaded into the chat as well, so you can reach them after um, after this conversation ends. Um, we have two things left to do. Sophia is going to talk to us for a few minutes at the end of our panel, at the end of our discussion. Um, but before that, I would like each one of you to give a moment, and if somebody who was brand new and searching for spirituality or who had somehow gotten lost in their own spirituality was to come to you and ask you, what is the one thing that you can tell me that will bring me back to or open me up to spirituality, my own spirituality? What would that one thing be? What would you tell them? Tough one, isn't it? so much. Lisa, please start. And then Allison. 
Yeah, well, I was just going to say, I mean, connecting within, connecting within themselves and, and sitting with themselves and feeling the feels and um, being with themselves and allowing, allowing the tears and allowing the grief and allowing the whatever comes up to come up and move through so that you can be real with yourself and you can continue to go deeper and deeper. Um, but I think it's really about connecting and being present with your, with your, with your human. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I could say creativity and nature and all that, but I really believe it's like sitting with yourself and being connected to, to yourself, to your heart, to within your heart and feeling that, just feeling that, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Allison. Um, so I, can you just repeat the question to make sure that I have the, I'm on yeah. two different, I'm yes, seeing two different things in my mind. Okay, and you can say both. Okay. Um, if, if somebody came to you who had either lost themselves in their yep. spirituality and needed to find a way back, or yep. who had never connected to their spirituality in the first place, what is the one thing that you would tell them? Okay, now I can see why I saw two things. So <laughs> I will, I will, because it's it's a two part it's a two parter. So when I first went through my spiritual awakening, I was hearing voices in my head. Now, I remember as a little girl, I used to hear those exact same voices, but here I am now, a 34-year-old adult going, what the actual fork is going on? Am I going goddamn crazy here? And I would hear my name and I would hear, you know, words and, I, and I, it freaked me out, right? But then something inside of me snapped to the point where it was like, if I'm going goddamn crazy, then... If I am not going goddamn crazy is what I said to myself, show me a four leaf clover, right? I had a ton of clover out the back and I knew there was clover there. I used to search for this stuff as a little girl. Anyway, so I'm walking out to the hen house to collect the eggs for the morning. Didn't think a thing of it because that was like three days ago. Anyway, <laughs> walked out to the, to the hen house and I got this, go to the bathtub and look down. I'm like, oh, bullshit, fuck off. I'm busy. I've got things to do. And I heard it again. And I'm like, okay, fine. That's right. I remember saying, if I wasn't crazy, I'm going to look. And I went and looked and no shit. There was a four leaf clover staring in between my feet. Like it said to me, go to the bathtub, look down. Trust okay. became my new best friend. Okay. So trust. So trust. My, my message here is listen to the stillness. Yeah. In whatever way that looks like, like my story just said, I went to the hen house. I wasn't even thinking about anything. I was just going to do my, my normal routine. And I was in that stillness of the walk of, you know, 530 in the morning, no one's awake. I got the message. So listen to the message and trust that is intended for you. you. Follow those nudges that you get. If you have something like that in that stillness, don't resist it. My resistance in that moment was like, yeah, right, bullshit. I'm in, I'm in a hurry. I've got to get to work. You know, we were doing human, you know. It took three seconds for me to turn my feet in a different direction and take five steps to look. What was I afraid of? Being disappointed was really what I was afraid of. When you go in, you know, I didn't want to go there and find, oh, well, it didn't happen. See, you told you it was going crazy. And then, you know. Yep. So it, listen to the stillness. And follow and the trust, nudge. And follow the nudge. Trust that okay. nudge. <laughs> it's the only thing that I can really encapsulate about, yeah, that question, really, I can. I couldn't have asked for a better question. So we've got two, two valuable pieces of advice that anybody can follow without too much work. Okay, who is next? Naomi. Oh, 
I'll, I'll share. That's magnificent insight, Alison. I love that trust is such a key component and integral component of spirituality. Because the spirituality, the things we've been talking of are the things that they are the unseen, aren't they? The unheard. They're what we, we sense, what we feel. And, and so we're bringing them. So it's a process of bringing that into our physical life and through our physical life. So, yeah, trust is, is really, really, really key. I would offer, together with that, um, simplicity. Simplicity. Yeah. Keep it simple. Because this is, you know, this is a pretty big topic, isn't it? Spirituality. I mean, it's so much. It's everything. And so we don't want to become overwhelmed in um, our journey and our pathway to experience this and uncover this and unfold into it. So, and it really can get that way because, you know, there's, it's so deep and there's so many levels and it's so complex. Oh, but what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? You know what? Just choose one thing. Um, and I was, um, realized something through the week when I was listening to um, a recording of something and it, somehow it triggered in my mind. I can't even remember what it was actually speaking of, but it triggered in my mind was, um, you know, at my moment of death, um, I do not want to be thinking, feeling, saying, I wish I loved more. So how can I love more every day in every part of my life within myself with others with the world so perhaps you know a simple little thing can be you know contemplating that moment of death because um you know I love the book of the Tibetan book of the living and dying I've spent a, a lot of time delving into that um as especially over years where I cared for my mum and um, caring for has been 10 years of caring, but in passing my mum over prior to that as well. And it, it, it is something that I, that came into my field. And just really simply, it's that, you know, we have to face that moment of death to fully live. Uh, and that's yes. very much part of spirituality, right, isn't it? It's living fully. <laughs> So my, my, what came into my mind just when, as, as Alison was speaking to was like, perhaps, you know, thinking about that a little bit, just like lightly, you know, not in a heavy way with curiosity, what, what truly matters, just, you know, sit quietly in silence, take five minutes every day, just to think and contemplate reflect what is truly important to me, what really matters, and then follow that explore how can I be more of that how can I express more of that and I think you will find that it will be things like trust compassion faith radiance joy love ultimately you'll find your way I think to you know something in those spaces a derivative of that and so with that keep it simple find just you know anchor in a little ritual okay a morning ritual is, and an evening ritual Leo, five we, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant we are we have five minutes left six minutes left simplicity is absolutely on the table 100 percent, and bringing more more love into your life zinzi uh, please if you can give us your one important thing and we still have to have Sophia um, bring her, herself on as well. Please go ahead, Cindy. Um, I, well, I agree with what everyone shared. I think there's been some great tips. Um, I think um, 
important thing is to bring curiosity to your life experience. Um, so I've, I've often found that the lessons of why we experience adversity or hardship often come only later. And it's through, it's through these experiences that often we find our spirituality. Um, I started exploring my spirituality much deeper when developed like there was a lot more anxious thoughts going on through some work that I was doing at the time so they can really offer us a lot it's sometimes hard to see when we're in in the thick of it I think one of the questions that came through was about um, what to do after when experiencing a trauma to find a way back to joy and I, I think nature can play a really big role in our healing journey as well immersing ourselves in nature spending time in nature get, getting out of the city or whether it is in the city just spending some time with a, a plant with an animal just observing um, connecting and feeling tuning into nature it can offer us a lot of healing as well. Brilliant. We've almost gone a full 360, a full circle in the simplicity of, of coming back to spirituality if one's lost it um, or if one has never, never recognized that they actually had it. Now, perhaps you do recognize that maybe you were more, more spiritual than you thought. Now, Josette, Sophia has told me I have an extra few minutes. Um, she's kindly giving me a few minutes. And Josette and, and Zinzi has already partly answered this question. Josette is asking, I'm wondering if someone has a technique they would like to offer to bring joy back after going through a trauma. So Zinzi has started that conversation. Lisa, I think, is going to continue it. Go ahead, Lisa. I'll just real just real quick. Um, it's it's really it's really discovering what brings you joy. Um, and so just uh, journaling on what that could be. It could be dance. It could be music. It could be um, you know being around people. It could be walk in the park. It could be anything. But I think the awareness, like Zinzi was talking about earlier, it's it's that's the key is becoming aware of what does bring you joy so that when you're in that state of, of trauma, you can, you can then, you know, reach back to that um, journal or, or, or list of things that you, that do bring you joy and start to activate that again. I've actually found that as well um, in my own life is that when I've gone through trauma and I've gone through trauma, just like everybody else, that when I would fall back into the trauma response, or I'd fall back into the depression of the trauma or the fear or the anger or the, or the despondency, the guilt, um, I would have to take myself, as Lisa said, back to, back to a, a place of joy before I could pull myself out of it. And that goes along with what Zinzi said as well, finding that place in nature, that place in a memory, that place in, in the world where you can physically take yourself out to change your environment, to change up the energy of the space that you're in. Does anybody else have something to offer, Josette? Allison. In the, in the term of simplicity, as Naomi said, go for a walk. Just mm. move your body. Doesn't matter how. You know, go if you want to release the anger of, of the trauma, go boxing. You know, if you want to shout, go to the cliff and scream your little heart out to the ocean. I'm sure she'll hear you. You know, releasing it however it is in the most simplest fashion will shift anything and everything in a moment. Um, you know, nature is exactly it and, and, and you know, pillows, what, whatever works. You know, it's just kind of like it's up. Yeah, just I don't know how many times I have been angry with the world 
I've gone down to the beach and as I'm moving, I can see that I'm being irrational and that I'm being silly and that it's really, I'm really being dramatic about the entire situation. So you turn and you scream to the universe and you just, whatever is finally left over, you yell, scream, let go. And then you go home and you just, it's done. I love it. <laughs> it's just. Love it. Just set. Just set. <laughs> Say something. Tell me. Naomi has Naomi has something to say too. Go ahead, Naomi. Yeah, uh, and you you really touched on this. Is um, playfulness. You know, think of yourself as a child. In, like, take yourself. Get in touch with that child that still actually is there within you. That innocence, that curiosity, playfulness. Color in. Do anything that's just fun fun um, and I could recommend um, just recently Dalai Lama and um, Bishop Tutu obviously who is who has now um, left us um, they've just there's a, a, a documentary and or there's a site you can go to I think it's um, the the big joy project and there's really um, a, I think seven days of it is a few minutes of different exercises that they take you through each day um, to get you into this state of joy and like one of them is you know get a recording of of laughing because when you hear people laugh like at first you resist it oh that's just stupid that's just bloody ridiculous are oh, you idiots you know whatever Bec when you're in that especially if you're in a you know really contracted state and you're really seriously feeling you know a lot of stuff and you and you you want to start moving through that like listen to like a recording of stupid laughter because it makes you laugh and that vibrates through your cells and your being and so many things happen it's really simple things um to do so yeah i think it's um the big joy um hang on a second i might be able to it's probably if i look i've probably still got it saved. mission joy let me just oh no it's taking me to a different site Mission Joy or the Big Big Joy Project. If you if you um, search that, it's actually it's it's run through a part of um, the Berkeley University. Like there's res the research into to joy is amazing. So I would start there because they're really really simple practices, fun practices, curious practices, um, and you can start to build your tools. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Um, Josette is on LinkedIn, so she actually can't see the chat the same way that we do. Um, but Allison offers a child's laughter, normally gets her, me too, it makes me crazy. When a kid starts to laugh, can't stop. Um, and Lisa offers laughter yoga. A laughter yoga is amazing. So both of those are additional tools, brilliant offerings. Thank you, ladies. Um, Anything else that anybody else would like to offer? We are just, just, just over time. Um, if you have something to say, now is the time. Otherwise, I'm going to turn it over to Sophia to end our session with a very important message about sacred you. All good. All good. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. And can I just say thank you so very much for being our guest facilitator today. I have loved this whole thing. It has been really, really appreciated. And I do look forward to your next event, which is coming up in July. I do believe what controls your peace or panic every day. Oh, that's on the 8th of July here in Australia and the 7th of July in the Northern Hemisphere. So. Thank you for that. And I'd also like to thank Zin Zin and Naomi for coming back and joining us. It's been a pleasure. And as well, Lisa and Alison for stepping in at very short notice because we did have a couple of cancellations. Very, very quickly coming up, our next panel discussion is next week. It's Monday evening here in Australia, the power of no, setting, setting and keeping healthy boundaries. There's more information on all the links that is in every comment. Thank you for everyone who's been joining us. We have had quite a few tuning in. I hope you've got a lot, a lot of benefit. If you want to know more and if you would like to join our sacred community, we, we're women from all over the world sharing their passion, sharing their joy, sharing their business, their wisdom in all different ways, including over 30 special interest tribes. You can join us now. 
just for one dollar one australian dollar and for that you get to experience any of our tribes for 21 days for three weeks at no extra cost and then it's just 15 australian dollars a month and like that you get to join lisa's tribe on finding me and rising up you get to join allison's tribe on human design and i said all of our um over 30 tribes that we've got now so thank you just like you thank you beautiful women truly it is an honor i've been sitting here listening to everyone and it has been an honor so thank you I honestly, I honestly could not have asked for better panelists. You, each one of you, brought so much wisdom and so much humility into the conversation. I, I truly do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you. Oops.